Hello friends! Today we are gonna deploy our Node.js and React applications on a server and connect them to each other. And also we are gonna use a domain. So you will be able to display your applications in different domains or subdomains with HTTPS certification. In this project we are gonna use three different applications. This is my Netflix app. If I go to the admin subdomain, the admin app is gonna show up. And we are gonna deploy our Node.js application to the API domain and fetch data from here. For this project, we are gonna be using Hostinger. It's one of the most popular hosting providers and the sponsor of this video. Of course, you can choose any other provider. The tutorial will be exactly the same and independent from any brand. But when it comes to price and performance, I highly recommend you to use Hostinger. Let's check out the VPS servers. I've been testing these servers around one month and I could say servers are really strong and connection is super fast and the price is really really affordable. You can deploy here tons of apps. Let's check one of them. As you can see it starts at really cheap price. If you don't want to that long term you can choose just one year or something and if you click the link in the description below or click here and use Lama dev code, you are gonna have an extra discount. After choosing the payment method and the information, your server will be ready to deploy our apps. And by the way, if you are creating relatively small applications, your designs or less complex applications, you can also check the shared web hosting option. You can deploy a hundred projects and you are gonna get a free domain and free SSR is such a good deal. After this video, I'm gonna create also another deployment tutorial on free services. If you are a beginner, still trying to learn the basics and just want to see your apps on any browser and share them with your friends, you can choose free services. But if your goal is landing any job, I highly recommend you to prepare a decent portfolio page and use a real server. So it's your choice. Let's continue. Okay. After all those process, you are gonna see this screen. I already created a VPS, but if you didn't create, you can just choose last version of Ubuntu. As you can see, there are many options here, but we are gonna be using Ubuntu. This version can be different after this video, but make sure that it's the latest version. Okay, and this creation takes couple minutes, and after that, you are gonna see this page. And as you can see, there's a domain here, it's not important, it's just random domain, it doesn't mean we are gonna use this domain. And here, to connect your server, we are gonna be using this server IP and if you want to, you can use your password, but there is a more secure option, which is SSH key. We are gonna connect with our key. So how we are gonna do this? Let's come here, it's official repository of the channel, you can see this branch, and here I created really detailed documentation, you can find everything here that you need. Okay, let's create our SSH key. If you are using macOS, Linux or Windows 10, of course if you have open SSH, only thing you should write is this command. Let's open up our CMD or terminal in your macOS, just paste here your command. And I will enter, you can give any name, I will say just Lama. And as you can see, it's asking any passphrase. It's kinda our secret key. I'm gonna write here Lama again. As you can see, it's not appear here. And after that, it's ready. If you go to the, your folder, you can see your key here. And this is gonna be our key. Let's copy this. And here in our server, in this area, I'm gonna paste this key. Let's update. And by the way, if you are using Mac or Linux, you can just copy this command and paste, and it's gonna copy your SSH key, and you can directly paste here. Okay, and one other solution is using PuTTY. If you have some trouble to create your SSH key here, you can download PuTTY and PuTTYgen, I'm gonna open up K generator and here I will say generate. You should mouse over this area, otherwise it's not gonna generate. 
and after that as you can see this is our key if you copy this and paste here and update and after that you can write here your secret key I will say llama and I'm gonna save my private key you can save that file anywhere and after that I'm gonna open up my putty software and here I'm gonna write my IP address let's copy and paste here and everything will be the same and after that you can click SSH and off and here you should choose your private key which you created it's here as you can see I will choose and by the way I'm just gonna increase this font size so you can see better I think I will open we are gonna log in as root and as you can see it asks our secret key which is llama and we are connected awesome let's see our server on the browser I will copy again and paste here and as you can see we have Apache server but we are not gonna use Apache instead we are gonna be using nginx so how I'm gonna delete it let's come here and in the deleting Apache server section as you can see firstly we should stop it I will copy and paste here and after that I'm gonna disable it you can directly remove this Apache but I don't recommend before stopping or disabling and after that we can finally remove I'll say yes okay we deleted our Apache but in any case it can be some dependencies related this Apache to prevent this I will say auto remove and as you can see there was no problem but just in any case and right now what I'm gonna do is cleaning my server and updating it I will say apt and clean all and after that I'm gonna update everything I will say apt by the way we are not writing sudo or something that because we are already admin so if you are using any user you have to write sudo before every command so I will say apt update right now we are gonna install our nginx server so I will say apt install and nginx I will say yes and it's gonna install but if you come here and refresh the page we still keep seeing this page it doesn't mean we are using Apache that because the main folder still has this page this HTML file and CSS files so let's check out that folder I will say CD var and www and don't forget this folder it's gonna be our main folder that shows our HTMLs and CSS and JavaScript files so we are gonna upload everything inside this folder so let's see what we have I'll say ls which is list as you can see we have HTML here if I go to HTML and say ls oops sorry HTML and ls as you can see this is the index HTML which displays this page so we don't need this HTML file anymore let's come back and what I will do is deleting this HTML folder I'm gonna write remove dash rf which means delete everything inside this folder and finally I will say HTML after that let's write ls and as you can see it's empty perfect and if I go to the my page and refresh the page as you can see 404 not found because we don't have any index HTML perfect as you remember when we create our node applications or react applications and when we start them we can see them on any port like 3000 5000 if I write here 3000 as you can see there is nothing right now 
So if I release my application in this page, in this port number, we can see them. But it's not a good idea to reach any application by writing here any port. It might be really dangerous. So how I'm gonna prevent this? I'm gonna set a firewall. And I will say apt install and ufw. And if I write here ufw and enable, we are gonna enable our firewall. And it says it may disrupt your connection. I will say yes, it's not gonna disrupt. Okay, we are still here. And right now, even if I run any application in any port, I'm not able to see them. Right now, I just want to make sure only port I should see is my HTTP port, which is 80. So how I'm gonna allow people to make only HTTP requests? To do that, you can write any rules in inside your firewall. There is a shortcut for this. I will say VFW and allow. For example, you can say only 80. You can say SSH, which allows to SSH connections, but but instead of writing them one by one, there's a shortcut. I will say nginx and full. I will enter. Oops, I have a mistake again. I will delay it. Okay, let's see again. You have W and status. As you can see, our rules are here. Okay, perfect. As I said, we can't see anything here. Let's create our first page. I'm gonna create here new folder. Let's say make directory and let's say Netflix and I will enter and inside this folder I'm gonna create my HTML file. I will say nano and if you want to you can use Vim also. It really doesn't matter. And I will say Netflix folder and inside create index HTML and we are gonna edit this. And here I will say, hey, this is my first page. I will save and I'm gonna exit. As you can see, there's a shortcut, command or control X. Let's check out, I will say, CD Netflix and LS. As you can see, our file is here. Perfect. But how am I gonna see this page? Let's come here, our documentation. I forgot here actually. Okay, first page. As you can see, we have a default configuration of our Nginx server. If I copy this and I will say nano and open up this file. And this is our default file. As you can see, we created a server. It's listening HTTP, which is 80. And there is nothing else. If you want to, you can write everything inside your default file. But if you are using server, it's not a good idea because you are not going to create only one application. Maybe you are going to upload 20, 30 applications and for each of them, coming here and editing them is not a good idea. So I'm going to delete this file. We are not going to use default. I will exit and I'm going to say remove this file. And one more thing, we don't have only sites available. We also have sites enabled. Let's check them out. I will say CD. And this time it's gonna be enabled. And if I say list, as you can see, we have default here also. It's exactly the same file inside your available folder. When you make any changes inside your default file, it's instantly updating this file also and our nginx server just looks into this default file inside sites enabled and it's gonna configure our applications so what i will do is deleting this default configuration also so i will say remove and default i will say ls okay it's empty perfect so let's create another configuration instead of default I will copy this actually from here and let's paste here and by the way as you can see it's not working like our VS code it's a little bit strange for example you can't click here to write something you have to use your keyboard like this one by one 
Okay. So let's say Netflix. So inside, let's come here. We are going to create our server first. And it's going to listen our HTTP. It was exactly the same, but there was no configuration. This time, we are going to add a location. If you go to the main folder, which is only our IP, look inside this folder. Remember, we created Netflix folder and inside index file, we wrote something. What I wrote, I don't remember. It's my first page or something like that. And look inside this folder. If there is index or index HTML or index HTM, just reflect this to our browser. And there are some proxy headers. I'm not going to deep dive into everything. I will just copy this and paste my new configuration. Okay. I will save command or control S and command and control X. Okay. Perfect. So inside sites available folder, we have our Netflix configuration. But inside sites enabled, we don't have anything. So I'm going to use this command. It basically links every file inside this folder to this folder. So when we make any changes inside Netflix configuration, it's going to be automatically here. We don't have to write anything. So I will copy this and paste here. Okay, so if I say list, and as you can see, it's here. Perfect. So we can leave here. Let's say root. So what I'm going to do is testing my Nginx. I'll say Nginx and T. As you can see, syntax is okay. Test is successful. So we don't have any problem. But we didn't start our Nginx. Let's start, I will say system control and start and engine x and if i say system and status let's check as you can see it's running and our engine x everything is okay and whenever you make change inside your engine x i recommend you to just reload it did I write here? Okay, doesn't matter, we just started, but after that, each time we are gonna just reload our Nginx. I will just refresh the page. As you can see, our first page is here. Perfect. So this time, instead of this static file, we are gonna run our Node application. But how I'm gonna upload my Node application and React application inside my server? It's really easy actually. We are going to use GitHub and we are going to fetch all data here. But firstly, we should make some changes here because we created everything for development mode. We are going to deploy our applications. So first thing I will do is adding here just course policy. So what I mean by that, I will say CD API and yarn add course. So basically, it's going to allow only this IP to make some requests. Remember our API, we were writing API and for example, users. And when we make this request, it's going to allow only this IP. And here I will say const course and require course. And here, after this mongoose, I can use this course. I will say app. And I will say course and okay. For now, it's enough. After that, we are going to change here. We are going to write our origins, our IP address or domain. But it can stay like that for now. That's because we are going to change our domain later. So that's all I think. Our IP. Okay. And don't forget your EMV file. Remember, we have Mongo and secret key for our JWT. It's not going to upload this EMV file, but just keep here. After that, we are going to create other EMV file inside our server and we are going to copy this and paste inside our application in the server. Okay. So what about this client and admin site? Firstly, if you remember, we were using proxy here, but it's just for development mode. We don't need that. I will delete and here I will come here. It's not private. I will say home page 
and it's going to be just dot. It's important because if you don't use it, it can be some problems inside your React router DOM. So don't forget this. Okay, we have env file here. Remember, inside we have port. But also, I'm going to write my API URL. I will say React app. And don't forget, if you are using React in your env file, you have to write React app first. And I will say API URL, for example. And it's going to be just this URL. Because I'm going to deploy my Node application inside this URL. OK, so what else? If you remember, we are using Axios and we always directly made our request according to proxy inside our package.json. But this time, we are not going to use any proxy. That means we have to change our Axios URL with this API URL. So I will copy this and for example inside home. Remember we are getting movie lists and we are using our proxy but we are gonna change it. So you can come here and write your process env and url but you can do one more thing. Actually I should have done before but I just forgot I'm sorry. Let's do right now I will say const and let's say axios instance and I'm going to create new instance. Axios and create. And here I'm going to write my base URL. And it's going to be process and env file and my URL. Okay. This time, instead of Axios, I'm going to use my Axios instance. And let's copy this and do the same thing for other files. We are using in register, for example. Let's copy this and take this Axios instance and paste here. And for others, where we need it, featured movie. I will copy this again. I know it's not a good idea doing this right now, but I'm sorry, I just forgot. Uh, it's it's not a big deal. We don't have many components. So basically, you can create your Axios instance and change your Axios here. And in our context, API calls, remember here, we are making our login process. So I will paste. Okay, that's all. So what about admin site? So I will come here for the env. It's going to be react api url. And it's going to be my address. And for package JSON, let's come here and write home page and dot and delete our proxy here. You don't have to delete, but we don't need, but it should stay. <laughs> so. So for here, home, let's copy this. It's going to be exactly the same thing, so I don't want to waste your time. So it's going to be a little bit quick here. OK, everything is ready, I think. Right now, I'm going to create my repository. I already have, but for you, I'm going to create new one. Let's go to the GitHub and I'm going to create new one. Let's say, how about furry broccoli? <laughs> it's really cool. Let's copy this and paste. OK, and public and I'm going to create my repository. And to reach this repository, we are going to use this URL. So I'm going to go to the main folder. And here I'm going to say git init. I'm going to initialize my GitHub and after I will say git add. But before, make sure that you added your env file inside the git ignore file. For example, here, make sure that you have .env file here. And for each application, for example, this is for admin, this is for API, and this is for client side. We don't want to upload our env file here. So I will say 
dot and it's gonna every files every folders so finally and then I will say git commit um, and just say commit by the way I just assume that you already know basic github commands I'm not gonna explain everything so finally I'm gonna paste my URL and I'm gonna push everything to this repository so I'll say git push origin master so as you can see our old files are here right now we are gonna fetch its applications to our server so let's open up our terminal and here firstly I'm gonna need git so I will say apt and install and git I will say yes okay so I'm gonna create folder here make dir and it's gonna be Netflix make sure that you are in the root and after that let's go inside CD Netflix I will come here and copy this address so I will say git clone and this address and it's gonna be in this folder so it's not gonna create new one I will enter okay let's see as you can see our all folders are here perfect so let's deploy our API first I'm gonna open up my nginx configuration remember we are gonna use this command all the time so let's open up and this time I'm gonna create another location let's paste and here my location will be API and this time since our application just then rest API we don't have any root any index any HTML any CSS so we don't need them let's delete but this time we are gonna need our port number remember we are releasing our application port number 8800 so I will write here proxy pass and it's gonna be HTTP you can write here localhost or your server IP doesn't matter and it's gonna be 8800 okay we don't need these try files also we don't have any file let's delete okay let's try I will save and quit let's quickly check our nginx everything looks great and I'm gonna reload my nginx okay it's gonna work but but we don't have anything inside port number 8800 firstly I need node.js so I will say apt install node.js and also we are gonna need npm so let's say apt install npm and by the way remember our mongodb remember it was allowed from everywhere so this time it was zero zero so everyone could reach your mongodb but this time i will just copy my ip address here and add here so instead of this server no one can reach your data perfect so let's open up our api and i will say npm install so it's going to install all dependencies because we don't have node modules so okay 
And remember, we don't have any EMV file. Let's open new one. I will say nano and EMV. My application here and inside my Let's close them. It's really crowded here. <laughs> okay. I'm going to copy this and paste here. Okay. Let's close. I just saved. And it's ready, I think. Let's run our application. I'm going to say node and index.js. We are not using Nodeman anymore. So it's working perfectly. So let's open up our browser and my ip i will open here as you can see it's our home page and if i say api okay that because i forgot this slash here it should be only my port okay let's save and i'm gonna refresh my nginx again I will run my application. And as you can see, it works. Perfect. If I go to the users, you are not authenticated. Awesome. It works. So if I go to the home page, we can still see our home page here. But this time, I'm going to add here my client site so I can delete this page. But before, I want to show you something else. Because if I close this SSH station here, it's going to kill this process, which means we are not going to see our applications on the browser anymore. So instead of writing node index.js all the time or keep open this station, we can install another package, which is pm2. I will say npm and install. But it's going to be global because we can use this everywhere. So it's going to be PM2. So let's create PM2 instance. To do that, I will say PM2 start. And we can give any name here. I will say just API. And it's going to be our index.js. Let's do this. Our API works. If I go to the browser and write here again API, as you can see, it works. But it's exactly the same thing. How I'm gonna keep awake this operation? It's really easy. I will say pm2 and startup and Ubuntu. If I do this, it's gonna work all the time. Let's see PM2 and status. As you can see, our API works. Even if I close this window, it's still gonna work. Awesome. So let's deploy our React apps. I will go to the client site. And I'm gonna install my dependencies. So I'll say npm install. I will copy my EMV file. This is API and my client site. Okay. I'm just gonna copy this. I hope there is no mistake. I will add here just slash. Okay, let's create EMV. I will say nano and dot EMV. And I'm gonna paste my EMV here. I will save. And this time, I'm not gonna npm start or pm2 start that because we are gonna have our index.html, CSS files, JS files. If I start this like my node application, we are gonna see our application here, but probably it's gonna be 15 or 20 megabytes and it's not the best practice. So we are gonna create our build folder. To do that, I'm gonna write here npm run and build. And it's going to be probably less than one megabyte. And we are going to show this on the browser. Of course, it's going to create this build folder inside our client. But we are going to move this to var and www. Remember, everything we are going to display here should be in that folder. 
to do that, let's come here. I'll git. I'm sorry I didn't follow here, but it's exactly the same thing. PM2 starts up as you can see. Okay. And here I deleted my index.html and after deleting this index.html I'm gonna create another folder which is client and I'm gonna move my build folder inside this folder. Perfect. Let's come here. I'll paste this first and create new folder. And finally move everything to that client. Make sure that there is no slash here or we are not writing Netflix client and build that because we are already inside this folder, Netflix and client. So we can directly write here build. Okay, let's do that. I will enter. So after that, I'm gonna add new location instead of previous one. Let's open our configuration. Where was it? This one. And here I'm gonna paste. And instead of just Netflix, it's gonna be client folder. Okay, I will save and reload my Nginx. Let's see, I hope everything is okay. I will refresh and it works. Awesome. But we have problem here. In our movies, probably I just made some mistake. I just made them quickly, I didn't test anything. So let's check here. Inside, it's my list item actually. Axios instance. Oh, I didn't save this. As you can see, there is dot here. So I'm gonna copy this. If you make this quickly, it happens. You never ever should do something like that before testing. For the tutorial, it can be acceptable. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to the nano and source and pages. It was pages or components? Components, I think. And list item. And list item. JSX. List. Okay, as you can see, it's not here. I'm just going to paste it. And I'm going to use this instance. I will save. But in this case, we have to build our application again. That because we made some changes. I will say npm run build. And it works. Perfect. As you can see, if I go to the series and movies and my watch page, perfect. We can see this page that because I have a user in my application section. Let's come here. And as you can see, I already saved my user here. That because I tried before you. If you open your application, it's going to be your register page. And after, you can log in and see this page. Perfect. So we can do the same thing for admin panel. When we write here admin, we are going to see our dashboard application. But I don't want to waste time. You understood, I think. Instead of this, we are going to use our domain right now. I already have a domain. It doesn't matter which provider you are using. Only thing you should do is going to DNS settings. And here, as you can see, I already created. For the home page, you should create a record and write here add. And finally, value will be our server IP address. How you are going to do this? You are going to come here and choose a record, add for main URL. And you can create any subdomain like API, like admin and after that you are gonna write here ip address and you are gonna save i've already done this that because it takes 20 minutes half hour i just didn't want to waste any time 
So right now I can use this domains. I will come here and again, let's choose our nginx config. Here I will copy. Okay, this time instead of writing one server and different locations, I'm gonna create three different servers. That because we are not gonna use any location, it's gonna be only home page for each subdomain. I will copy this and I'm gonna delete. Like that, and I'm gonna create another server. By the way, you don't have to create server inside this Netflix file. You can create another configuration and separate them, but doesn't matter. Let's write here server. And it's gonna be again listen 80. And I'm gonna paste here. Oops, when I click this, it's just copy this. So I have to write this again. So I will copy here. Let's paste. When you use remote server, it's not easy to use. It's not like VS Code. Let's delete here. And index. And I'm gonna add here my proxy pass. And HTTP. Where is my IP address? Let's come here and copy this. And it's gonna be my port. Okay, so we don't need that. Okay, I can close my server and I'm gonna create one more. To do that, I can copy this client site. It's easier, I think. I will copy here and let's come and paste here. This time it's not gonna be client, our root will be admin. We are gonna create our build folder and pass inside this folder. So I will say admin. So let's make sure we are writing here our domain. So how I'm gonna do this? It's really easy. It's gonna be server underscore name. And I will write here my domain and, and W version. So I can copy this and for the API and this time I'm going to indicate my subdomain which is API. And for the admin panel, let's paste here and it's going to be admin.mydomain. Okay, I hope everything is okay. I will just save and I'm going to test my Nginx. Okay, something is wrong because we forgot this semicolon. Let's correct this again. We need semicolon here. And by the way, you saw how important to test your Nginx each time. Okay, I will save. Let's test again. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna refresh my Nginx. And this time I'm going to admin panel. I will say cd and admin and i'm gonna build my bot before npm install so i'm gonna install my dependencies okay it's ready so i will say npm run build by the way i forgot changing my env file so i will say no no and dot env let's come here and for the admin panel and we, I will paste here. This time, actually, instead of this IP address, I can say my domain. And it's gonna be api.mydomain. Of course, API endpoint. Don't forget this, it's really important. So, and I will do the same thing for client side, but before, let's save and run build. Okay, it's ready. I can copy my folder to main index folder. So I will say copy and R 
it's going to be my build folder and everything inside this folder var www and netflix admin let's run okay it's not a directory because we didn't create let's create i will say make there and it's gonna be my folder netflix remember we don't have any admin folder here let's create and after that i can copy okay let's go to the client side and do the same thing for env file i will say cd and client i will say nano env file and as you can see it's our ip address let's change this and api okay i will save and quit i have to run and build npm run build okay i can copy my folder i will come here right now it's going to be client and finally i'm going to reload my nginx and we are going to see i hope everything is okay let's come here and write my domain here okay client side works but let's check our admin panel by the way uh, okay it works i'm going to movies every movies are here lists okay it works so there is something wrong with my client side let's check this out i will open my console maybe it's about my user let's delete this and i'm gonna refresh i will check whether this login process works or not i will write my email and password let's check okay okay guys i just make silly mistake there was not dot com here so i correct it and after i just build my application again and copy everything to my main folder and reload my nginx and it works perfectly right now as you can see series and movies and any movie here as you can see awesome so what i'm gonna do is creating https so it's gonna be secure connection let's come here it's the ending as you can see there is a free certification so i will copy this and paste here yes and after that we are gonna check our status we have actually done that but in any case and after that we are gonna apply this https certification to our main domain our subdomains api and admin let's do that i will paste and as you can see our nginx full rules and after that let's copy just here and it's gonna be my domains and the api dot and finally d and admin dot dot com i hope i didn't make any silly mistake again <laughs> so i will enter so it asks some email address let's write here address okay i agree are you willing to share your email address of course not and it's going to apply whole certification for each domain and after that it asks if you want to redirect or request to https or not so it's going to be yes which is true and it's ready and as you can see it's going to expire less than one month so after one month you should come here and renew it but if you don't want to do this you can set just a timer and it's going to automatically renew your certification so i will paste here 
and run this set bot twice daily. Okay, perfect. Okay, and let's reload our nginx and let's check. I will refresh. And right now, as you can see, it's secure. Of course, we can see them that because our API address is HTTP, we are going to change it. But for others, let's try for API. As you can see, it works. And for admin, and it's secure right now. Okay, guys, I changed my EME file. As you can see, it's HTTPS right now, and it works perfectly. And our connection is secure, so it might look a little bit confusing, but if you check the instruction here and follow the video, you are going to see how easy it is. By the way, you might have some errors because your application and mine is not the same, but it's totally normal because deployment is another world. You cannot make sure whether it's going to work or not. Unfortunately, it's like this. But if you understood how Nginx works and how you can upload your folders, it's totally enough, I think. You are going to figure out the rest. And don't forget to check out hosting our deals. If this price is for you, you should definitely check this out. And don't forget to use Llama Dev Code. You are going to get discount. And that's all, I think. In the next tutorial, we are going to deploy our applications. But this time, it's going to be in Heroku or Netlify. This kind of free options. So I hope you liked the video. If you learned something new today, please like the video and write some comments. And don't forget to follow Lama Dev social media accounts. You can ask your questions, get inspiration from other users. It can be really useful for you. So I hope I will see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.